Diabetic kidney disease is the most common form of progressive kidney disease in the United States. And most of diabetes is type 2 diabetes, which is the one that typically happens in adults. And it progresses through a very uh, stereotyped number of stages. First, you develop a stage called microalbuminuria. And this is a stage where there are very, very minute quantities of protein, mostly albumin, that can be detected in the urine. The protein itself is not dangerous to the kidney, but it's not supposed to be there and is usually one of the first indications you see that the diabetes is starting to affect the kidneys. Think of it this way. The kidney is sort of like a sieve. Imagine you're washing blueberries in the sink. The blueberries go in the sieve, you pour in the water, that holds all the blueberries in, and the water goes out. If you start to see blueberries in the sink, well, there's nothing wrong with the blueberries, but it means you have a hole in your sieve. Same thing with the kidneys. The kidneys are supposed to keep all of that protein inside and let all the urine flow out. If you start to see protein in the urine, it's not that you're eating too much or too little protein or the wrong protein. It means that there's little tiny holes in the kidney that really shouldn't be there, and it's usually caused by the diabetes. After that, you start to see more and more protein in the urine, and this is a stage called macroalbuminuria or frank proteinuria, and this is protein that's so high level that it's detectable by dipstick. After that, you start to see it in the blood work, where you see an increase in a blood test called the creatinine, and that measures how well your kidneys are working. The higher it is, the worse your kidney disease, and it typically gets worse and worse over time with diabetes until you progress to frank kidney failure, which requires transplantation or dialysis. This whole process takes a long time, from the development of type 2 diabetes to microalbuminuria to proteinuria to kidney disease to dialysis. Each stage takes approximately five years or so. So there's plenty of time if you detect it to intervene. However, there's only a few drugs that have been proven to slow down this progression. There's a drug called an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker, which is a type of high blood pressure medication. And there's another medication called an SGLT2. And these certainly have their use in the treatment of diabetic nephropathy. However, diet is also very important, but up until now, there really hadn't been any trials. The best we could say was that if you could use the diet to reverse your type 2 diabetes, then it's likely that you're not going to develop worsening diabetic kidney disease because you don't have the diabetes. However, the first trials that suggested that you can actually start to reverse it was published just recently in 2022. It was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, and the study was called Six-Month Periodic Fasting in Patients with Type 2 Diabetes and Diabetic Nephropathy, a proof-of-concept study. And the reason it was called a proof-of-concept was that this concept had never been shown before. And it used something called the Fasting Mimicking Diet, which we covered in a previous video, which is a five Day period where you have a specially formulated diet which is supposed to preserve a lot of the benefits of fasting without actually true fasting because you are eating certain things. However, they've done a number of studies and this was one of the most interesting studies in the diabetic field because it actually started to show for the first time that you could go from a, the stage of microalbuminuria, which is the most common and earliest stage back and reverse it. What they had shown was this fasting mimicking diet can actually reverse a lot of the inflammation and all, a lot of the oxidative damage that happens with uh, type 2 diabetes. And this helps support the cellular protection for the kidneys. 
And by shifting the metabolism from glucose towards fat oxidation, this might have some beneficial effects. Remember, the body really has two types of fuel. It can run on glucose and it can run on fat. And what they wanted to do is shift it to fat and lower the glucose to see what kind of benefits you'd see for the kidneys. So 40 patients at the University of Heidelberg in Germany with type 2 diabetes and protein in the urine were given this fasting mimicking diet for six months. And what they did was they measured the protein in the urine and this diet would be five days per month, and these were adults aged 50 to 75. They were randomized to either this fasting mimicking diet or a Mediterranean diet. They measured something called the SUPAR, which was the soluble urokinase plasminogen activator receptor, because this was a more advanced marker of how much injury there was to the kidneys. And at six months, what they found were some very impressive results. First of all, blood glucose improved significantly. For example, in the group that got the fasting mimicking diet, their hemoglobin A1C went from 8.1% to 6.7, a very impressive reduction, as powerful as any medication on the market today, and yet this was achieved with diet alone. In the Mediterranean group, you saw practically no difference in the A1C going from 7.7 .7 to 7.7. .7. Body weight dropped more than 20 pounds in the fasting mimicking diet compared to no weight loss. So even from that standpoint, you could see that there were very highly impressive results coming from fasting and mimicking that. The C-peptide is a measure where uh, you're looking at how much insulin is being produced in the body, and there was significantly less, which means that there's a lot less of the hyperinsulinemia. And if you look at a marker of insulin resistance called the HOMA or HOMA, what you found was that the fasting mimicking group went from 6.4 to 2.6. Again, almost uh, double or triple the benefit that you saw with just the Mediterranean diet, which had uh, really no benefits going from 6.1 to 5.7. Cystatin C, uh, which is a very, very sensitive measure of how well the kidneys are working, and it stayed stable on the fasting mimicking diet, but in the Mediterranean diet, it slowly got worse, which is consistent with what we see clinically, which is that over time, kidney function tends to get worse. Overall, when you're looking at the amount of protein in the urine, the overall results were negative, because, although it does look like, on the surface, like it should be positive, because the amount of protein in the urine, the ACR, went from 51 to 25, which is almost half, but because it was a relatively small study, it wasn't statistically significant. But if you just look at the group that had the very early stage, which is the microalbuminuria, you see a different story. That is, you see a 40% drop in the ACR from 43 to 23, compared to the Mediterranean diet where there is really no difference going from 44 to 37.2. Importantly, there was really very few side effects. There's no significant uh, episodes of low or high uh, blood sugars, and there was no episodes of low blood pressure. People seem to tolerate it just fine. So what we see in this really uh, revolutionary study is that by introducing a period of five days where you have fasting or fasting mimicking diet, you can significantly improve multiple measures, both from a metabolic standpoint, that is their blood sugar, the weight, the insulin resistance, but you can actually start to reverse some of the kidney damage if it's at the early stage. Once you've progressed to a more advanced stage, because it takes 10 or 15 years to get to that stage, it may not reverse in six months, but the earliest stages are reversible, which means that we should be looking for it and maybe 
recommending that to our patients because if you don't, we know that this Mediterranean diet is going to cause continued progression of this disease, which is going to lead to worsening kidney disease and then eventually dialysis or transplantation.